Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning, everyone. Pastor Esther here. It's another Saturday, so we're going to continue our survey through the Bible. We are on week 24, and today we're going to be learning about a parable of Jesus. So when Jesus taught, he often used parables, and parables are short stories um, that Jesus would use to convey um, either a deeper spiritual truth or convey a um, a truth about God and about his kingdom. So today we are in Mark chapter four and we are gonna be looking about looking at the parable of the sower and the soil. So from Mark chapter four, verse three, this is Jesus talking. He says, listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow. As he was sowing, some seed fell beside the road and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of soil. And when the sun had risen, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns and the thorns came up and choked it and it yielded no crop. Other seeds fell into the good soil. And as they grew up and increased, they yielded a crop and produced 30, 60 and 100 times more. After Jesus shares this parable, the disciples go back to him and ask him to explain what this parable means. And Jesus goes ahead and he and he explains this parable. So this is Mark chapter 14. He says, the sower sows the word. These are the ones who are beside the road where the word is sown. Okay, so. And when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away um, the word which has been sown. All right, so let's push pause for a second here. So the sower, you can think of as a farmer, and the seed would be the word here. So he goes on to say that in the first scenario where the sower comes and he sows the seed out, and it fell besides the road, the birds came and ate it up. So Jesus is saying um, that bird in his stories representing Satan, when God's word is spread out, it's preached, it's taught, it's spoken out, and hearers hear it, there are some people that when they hear it, Satan comes and immediately takes that word away so that it has no place or has no opportunity to sit in the soil of their heart and to for it to begin to convict them for for it to begin to transform their lives for it to begin to show them about god then jesus go, goes on and he says in verse 16 and in a similar way these are the ones sown with seed on the rocky places who when they hear the word immediately receive it with joy and yet they have no firm root in themselves but are only temporary then when affliction or persecution occurs because of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown with seed among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word, but the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things enter and choke the word and it becomes fruitful. Unfruitful, excuse me. Verse 20, and those are the ones, sorry, and the, those are the ones sown with seed on the good soil, and they hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 times as much. Okay, um, It is so important that when we read the word, um, I think one of the things that we can do, especially with Jesus' teachings, is ask ourselves, what category do I fall into? Especially with the parable of the soil. So we have four different categories. We have someone who hears the word, but immediately Satan takes it away. We have another person who hears the word and they receive it with joy, but that word does not take root in their heart. Why? So what does it mean for the word to take root in our hearts? Well, this is an active part we must play uh, when we hear God's word, especially as believers. And that means that when we hear a word, whether it's on a devotional, whether it's on um, Sunday as we are hearing the preaching from the pastor, um, whether it's in our 
private devotional time? How do we bear roots in our hearts? Well, one of which one of the ways we do that is we need to meditate on that word. We need to think on it over and over again. We need to chew on it. We need to reflect on it. We need to pray about it and whatever that word is saying to us. Because when we do that, it will take root in our heart and it will anchor us. So Jesus is saying that there are people who they hear the word and that doesn't happen in their lives. So when persecutions and hard times come, they fall away from the faith. They fall away from God. They fall away um, and there's no application of that word that they heard. So we see no fruit in their lives. And then Jesus says, hey, there's another group. They hear the word, they receive it. Um, but this one is grown amongst thorns. And it says that uh, Jesus tells us what these thorns are. These thorns are the worries of the world. These thorns are the deceitfulness of wealth and their desires for other things. Um, whenever I read this parable, I'm reminded of what James said in James uh, chapter, I believe it's chapter one and two, where he admonishes us as believers that we should not just be hearers of the word, but we should be doers of the word. Um, and I believe this particular category of believers who are hearing the word is is what we see quite often in church today um oftentimes we hear god's word we hear about things like spreading the gospel serving god um in our homes in the church we hear about loving our neighbors as ourselves we hear about forgiving and the worries of this world choke out that world or the deceitfulness of wealth I believe we're living in a time where, um, as young people will say, um, I need to go catch the bag. Basically, I need to go and make money. I need to have multiple streams of income. I need to make sure that all my bills are taken care of. And these are good things in the sense of um, we should be good stewards of what God has given us. We should be accountable um, in how we use our resources, but we should not be chasing after wealth. We are constantly being given a message, a false narrative that wealth equals happiness, wealth equals joy, wealth equals all our problems being solved. But Jesus is telling us that there is a deceitfulness to wealth. Jesus is also telling us that when we are consumed with the worries of the world, meaning what's gonna happen um, in the future, uh, what's gonna happen with my kids, how am I gonna be able to do take care of myself, uh, what's gonna happen with the environment. Now, again, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be concerned about these things, but we shouldn't be concerned to the point where we are worried because that worry generates fear and when there's fear there's no space for us to have faith and anchor ourselves on God's word and then Jesus goes on to say that hey other desires choke the word out what are those other desires that you have are you following God's word are you following Jesus's word to lay down your life and follow him are you walking in accordance with God's call upon your life which is to spread the gospel to make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit are we doing that or are we so focused on other things that what we read in the word of God has no place in our hearts and so there's no fruit produced today i want to challenge us that our prayer would be let us be individuals who our hearts our minds are good soil that when we hear the word we receive it and we allow it to take root in our lives. We allow the word to challenge us. We allow the word to transform us. We allow the word to convict us. We allow the world, the word of God, excuse me, to change the, our perception of our life. Because when we do that, Jesus is telling us that we're gonna bear fruit. We're gonna bear 30, 60, and 100 fruit. Um, it is so important that anytime we hear the word, we don't just let it pass us by, but we apply it to our lives. We apply it to our circumstance. We chew on it. We dig in through it and we are obedient to it because when we do all of that, the fruit of Christ, um, the fruit of the spirit will be matured in us. And more than ever before, we will be a light in the midst of darkness. We will be an anchor and a true ambassador of the gospel. 
And the reality is that all those around us, they need to not only hear the word of God, but they need to see it in action in our lives, in our decisions, in our day-to-day -day moments so that they can see that God is real, that Jesus is true, and that he is their hope and their redemption. So I want to encourage you as I'm also challenging myself that I want to be good soil, that when the word comes in, it's going to take root. I'm going to hear it. I'm going to be obedient to it and that God's fruit will be produced. And I hope that you will do the same today. God bless you. Mm -hmm.